Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's rise up as we pray together. Our Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for this wonderful retreat. Thank you for the victory that you won on the cross of Calvary for everyone. Thank you, Lord, because you make us more than conquerors. And more than conquerors, we're going to be each and every one of us in Jesus' name. We thank you for journey mercies you have granted us, men, women, brothers, sisters, and youths, and adults, and children everywhere with all the people that are connected. Oh Lord, we just pray as we have begun to show us your mercy. We pray that this mercy will multiply in every life, every family, and the church in Jesus' name. And we pray that the joy of belonging to you will never stop in our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that your word will have an interest in our hearts. And your word will do good in every heart and every life. In Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at a Bible teaching this morning. And it's on the Christian soldiers conquering new nature. There are many things to find in that a topic itself. And number one is the Christian. The Christian. Who is a Christian? Because there are many people that uh, carry the Bible and mention the name of Christ. And they think that because they mention the name of Christ, they are Christians. But who are Christians? They are the people that have led the world and the sin and the evil and the defilement of the world. And they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. And because of that faith in Christ, life has turned around. They become new creatures in Christ. We call them, the Bible calls them Christians. I'll come back to the word soldier but the conquering when there is a battle when there is a conflict a battle with satan a battle with the flesh battle of the world and then you become an overcomer by the grace of god by the strength and the power of the almighty you are able to overcome the flesh overcome the world and overcome self and overcome the devil that is a conqueror and when you do that not just one day or just one week or just one month but day after day and week after week and month after month you are conquering and conquering and conquering we say that's a conquering soldier but then the new nature we had an old nature and that old nature were brought into this world we were born in sin and raised in sin by birth we were sinners by choice we were sinners by practice we were sinners and as a result of that we had an old nature but then we come to the lord and he gives us this brand new nature very different from the old nature that's what the bible says if any man any woman be in christ he is a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things have become new and i'll come to that word soldier before i do that i need to tell you that the christian the believer the child of god is referred to by many names or titles in the bible can i show you number one is called a son we're looking at john chapter one and i'm looking at verse 12 it says but as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That means then you are a sinner. You came out of your sin. You came to the Lord Jesus Christ. After turning away from your sin, you received him. You believed him as your savior. And because you believed him as your savior, it says, as many as received him that way. No matter who you are, you are coming from the east or from the west, from the north, from the south. You are coming from Africa, from outside Africa. As many as received him, he gave them the power, the right, the authority to become the very sons of God. So we are called sons, but we are also called sheep. Because the Bible likens the sinners to goats, but now it likens the believers to sheep. Because of that new nature, I'm looking at John chapter 10. In John chapter 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He is the great shepherd. 
he is the good shepherd and he is the glorious shepherd he is the shepherd that came he is the shepherd of, of our souls right now and he is the shepherd still to come and then he says all those who are following him all those who believe him all those who walk in the steps of Christ he says we are sheep he says we hear his voice and then we follow him we are sons we are sheep but we are also salt because our life the bitterness is gone the anger is gone the hatred is gone the poison is gone and now we are the salt of the earth in Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5 I'm reading there from verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor I pray you'll never lose your savor that grace of God in you that makes you different from the people of the world I pray you'll never lose that in Jesus name but if the salt have lost its savor when we shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing you'll be good for something I said you'll be good for something when that saltiness is there the savor is there the sweetness is there the grace of God is there the spirituality is there and you retain that grace of God in your life and you retain the flavor of your interaction your fellowship with the Lord then the savor remains there then you'll be good for something but then if the saltiness is gone if the savor is gone if the sweetness is gone if the graciousness is gone then it says will be good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men we're also called saints in the bible we're looking at romans chapter one in romans chapter one i'm reading from verse seven romans chapter one verse seven here is what the christian is here is who the christian is is a son of god is a sheep of the fold is a salt in the earth and now he is saint he tells us in romans chapter one verse seven it says to all that be in rome called beloved of god called to be saints grace to you and peace from god a father and the Lord Jesus Christ you can tell there it says we're called to be saints you see when you look at the Christian you're looking at the many sides of the Christian are you looking at the many areas of grace in the life of that Christian and it says here that if you're a child of God born again you are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb you came out of the world out of darkness into the light and you came out of the degradation and out of all those defilements of the world and then you came to Christ and you're not in the kingdom of God it says you must be a saint in fact it tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 how saints live how saints behave how saints act it says in verse 3 about fornication and all uncleanness and or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becomes tell me saints so they were the saints of God but you know also that we are servants of Christ servants of Christ that is we are now to serve Christ we're no more to serve ourselves or to serve society or to serve the devil or to serve any kind of tradition or to serve any kind of culture we're not to serve the Lord that's why he calls us sons that's why he calls us sheep that's why he calls us salt that's why he calls us saint and now he calls us servant in Ephesians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 6 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6 it says not with eye service as men please us but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart it tells us now you see the names the Christians are called the believers are called and when you know the implication and you know the uh, the reason why you are called all these names then you live and you behave according to the name you are called it says we're servants of Christ and because we're servants of Christ we must do the will of God from the heart but then he also calls us strangers we're looking at as uh, first Peter chapter 2 verse 11 first Peter chapter 2 verse 11 is saying that now in the world where we are this is not our home 
this is not our resting place and this is not where we're going to live forever there is a better country there is a better city and we're looking for that better city and better country wherein dwelleth righteousness and it says always be conscious wherever you are that you are not going to have an eternal place over here you're going to another place so you are strangers and pilgrims here in first peter chapter 2 i'm reading there from verse 11 dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly laws which war against the soul it says you're on the battlefield and there's something that is warring against your soul and it says remember you're a soldier here and then you're also a stranger and then all those people of the world because you don't agree with them because you don't eat what they eat or drink what they drink or dress the way they dress or go to all their kind of nightclubs they go to they say they can't just strange and, and that is true that is true you're a stranger in this world and therefore it says they'll battle against you and war against you and because they war against your soul and you have to make up your mind and decide that that heaven i'm going to get there that is what now brings the name or the title of a soldier you know as long as i think i'm a son that's good and then you think i am sheep that is wonderful and then you think i'm salt i'm supposed to be sweet and gracious that is great and then you are just a servant of christ you're winning souls and you're seeking for the lord you're serving the lord and serving the church that is wonderful and then but you're a stranger and now you become a soldier that's a battle that's a conflict and there is a fight and you're going to win in that war in jesus name second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ it says now as you go through this journey of being a christian or being a believer or being a child of god a son salt sheep saint servant stranger soldier and as you come to this title of a soldier then you know that you cannot just you know fold your hand and sit on an armchair rocking chair and saying amazing grace i'm going to heaven getting to heaven demands a fight you fight the flesh you're going to fight cell you're going to fight sin you're going to fight the devil you're going to fight all the things coming from the world if you're going to ever get to that beulah land the promised land because you are a soldier and it says there is something to endure that you need to endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ which means then that as a soldier and you know there is something to fight your own peculiarities your own flesh and your own a kind of a, you know lifestyle that is not going to allow you to live a life that is glorifying to god you see there is a fight to fight that's why the bible says fight the good fight of faith you'll fight to win in jesus name let me read that verse again in second timothy chapter 2 and i'm reading there from verse 3 and verse 4 it says that thou therefore endure hardness hardness will be there difficulties will be there persecution will be there opposition will be there and it says there for you you endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ no man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be to be what to be a soldier the lord has chosen us to be soldiers and we're going to win every time in jesus name but thank god he gives us a new nature and that new nature if you yield to that new nature it will not fail and you will not fail in jesus name second peter chapter one second peter chapter one verses three and four second peter chapter one verses three and four according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called you called us to glory and to virtue 
whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of I said partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust that tells us then we're christian soldiers and we're conquering because we have a new nature the christian soldiers conquering new nature we're looking at three points uh, from in this message number one the old nature and its condemnation the old nature and its condemnation there's an old nature and there's condemnation on that old nature and then point number two the new nature after conversion it's the conversion is a change of heart the change of life is a transformation that comes it is your coming out of something and getting into christ that's what you call conversion and conversion comes with transformation and that transformation comes with this new nature the new nature after conversion number three the divine nature in the conqueror if you hear that somebody is a conqueror spiritually is a conqueror in the world is a conqueror overcoming the flesh is a conqueror that has a victory every time and everywhere is because there's a nature within him and that nature can fight against any corruption coming from the world or the flesh of the devil or the devil and still overcome the divine nature in the conqueror we're coming to number one number one the old nature and its condemnation we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 i read there from verse 1 it tells us what we were and the many people who have not been born again yet what they are those who have not known the lord jesus christ what they are the people that are still living in darkness and swimming in the ocean of sin drinking sin and eating sin and living in sin and demonstrating sin every time everywhere the kind of nature they have the old nature and unfortunately that old nature is condemned and it's condemnation ephesians chapter 2 I read from verse 1 and you are sick quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins it says that sinners who are not born again yet sinners who have the old nature they are dead in trespasses and sins what does that mean dead in trespasses and sins it means they're not sensitive at all that anything is wrong like a dead man a dead woman a dead child a dead boy a dead girl if somebody is dead whatever is going on around he doesn't know doesn't hear any sound doesn't see any picture doesn't feel any pain doesn't think of anything it's just they're static and if it's left there for a long time, they're rotting. Many people are rotting in this life. You look at their lives, they're rotting. You look at their behavior, they're rotting. You look at their actions, they're rotting. And there is no sensitivity of the Spirit of God in them. There is no sensitivity of right and wrong. They just stay there. Whatever they do, they just do it. And if you even point out to them, this is wrong, except the Holy Ghost will awaken them to know that this is wrong they don't see anything wrong in that is like you're trying to tell a dead man a dead woman and you're saying hey look at this and look at this he doesn't respond because a dead man cannot respond we're saying that the bible says that the one who is still having the old nature is dead in trespasses and sins think about your life and think about your actions and there are things to do and other people say how could you do that i don't see anything wrong in that i can't see i can't feel i can't hear i can't sense anything that is wrong what you do just looks normal to you it might be destroying your life but it's normal to you it might be very near the pit but that's normal to you it might be near the fire it is normal to you because you are dead in sins and trespasses in verse 2 wherein in time past you walk according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air it says the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience disobedience it will be the hallmark will be the watchword will be the central thing 
of that person's life and he doesn't know that there's anything wrong at all and then he tells us in verse 3 among whom also we had a conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature you see that we are by nature think about that we were by nature the children of wrath even as others that talks about the old nature and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 tells us more about the people that have this old nature not born again about this old nature not converted about this old nature they may go to church or come to church they may answer deeper life or shallow life they may answer bible life christian or whatever name they call themselves but because the conversion has not taken place and they're still carrying about in their breast in their heart in their mind in their soul in their spirit they're still carrying on the old nature this is what will happen to them look at chapter 4 verse 17 it says this i say therefore and testify in the lord that she henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind that's the old nature the vanity of their mind they are vain they're kind of superficial and whatever they do they just see on the surface they may be religious but they are not righteous it says in verse 18 having the understanding darkened that's the old nature the understanding is darkened they don't understand righteousness they don't understand holiness they don't understand the life we have in Christ. They don't understand kingdom citizenship. They don't understand how a child of God is not very different because of Calvary and because of the power of the cross that comes to break all the presence and the power of sin in our lives. They do not understand because it says over here that their understanding is darkened. It says in verse 18, being alienated, separated from the life of of God through the ignorance that is in them they're totally ignorant and they may know some you know some a kind of secular subjects they may go to university they may go to college they may be able to read newspaper and be able to join some verbs and nouns together to make a sentence but when it comes to spiritual things they are at sea they are totally lost they do not understand anything because the spirit of revelation has not been given unto them and it says that these people that have the old nature this is who they are and this is how they live and it says it is because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with greediness that is it's like they're just in a hurry to destroy themselves they say it's like they're too slow in getting to hell and they run very fast and fast and fast on the broadway that leads to perdition because they need hurry to get to hell it says those are the people that have the old nature and when you have that old nature i pray that uh, today if that old nature is there it will be converted in jesus name because there's danger there's danger if you continue with that old nature there's danger if you continue with that nature of satan there's danger if you continue that practice of sin that's why it says be warned and take the warning very quickly urgently so that you'll be able to escape the danger that is to come on the people that carry all through life with this old nature in romans chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 9 romans chapter 3 verse 9 it says what then are we any better than what the apostle is talking about by the revelation of the spirit here is are we jews better because we follow the law and because we keep the sabbath day and because we eat uh, clean animals and don't eat unclean animals and because we sacrifice this and sacrifice that are we any better than the gentiles then the answer is says, says no in no wise for we have before proved both jews and gentiles that they are all under sin how look at verse 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one before we meet the lord jesus christ there's none righteous no not one before we repent there's none righteous no not one before we meet jesus christ and then abandon our old ways and bring in the nature of christ into our hearts there's none righteous no not one before we visit calvary and we allow calvary by faith to 
cross everything that is wrong in our lives and to make a total change in our lives there is none righteous no not one and then it goes on it says there is none that understand it because we have the old nature and then it says there is none that seeketh after god they are all gone out of the way they are all together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one when it says they all together become unprofitable what that means is that a person with the old nature is not profitable to his family and look at the man that calls himself husband and he doesn't know how to provide for the family he has the old nature which is selfish i will never think of the joy and the happiness of other people look at the man that calls himself a father i will never take care of the children and he doesn't know that there's anything bad in spending all the money that he ought to spend on the children educate the children clothe the children and spend everything drinking and smoking and spend everything in nightclub look at the one that says it's a child because they do not know any better that they ought to respect their parents and love their parents and honor their parents because of what their parents are doing their spiritual mind is totally dark and that's why it says they're not profitable to themselves they're not profitable to the members of their families they're not profitable to the church either i pity that church <clears throat> that you'll take a man or take a woman with an old nature and make them preacher and make them worker and make them servants of god and make them serve the holy communion and make them do this and do that they will not be profitable to the church that's why it says the people that have the old nature they are unprofitable to everyone and they're not profitable to the kingdom of god neither are they profitable to god they're not profitable in time and they will not be profitable in eternity that's why the lord is going to pack them all aside and send them to hellfire it goes on in verse 13 it says they are thrown is an open sepulchre with their tongues with their tongues they have used the seed the poison of herbs is under their leaves and it says whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood destruction and misery are in their way and then it says and the way of peace they have not known they do not know how to live in peace they're always always for fight always for a quarrel always for conflict they are always battling battling themselves because they do not have peace in their heart they will not have any peace in their surrounding as well and he says in verse 18 there is no fear of god before their eyes now we know now what things soever the law says it said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before god that means all those people they are guilty in the sight of the lord you have seen the marks of the old nature the evidence of the old nature the characteristics of the old nature the lifestyle of the old nature now you look at the condemnation that comes upon those people that have the old nature and then and there's no conversion and there's no salvation and there's no righteousness and there's no change there's no transformation the people that go through life without any change the old nature they brought into this world is what they live with until they don't go out of this world with that same old nature look at the condemnation that comes upon them and if you are still like that today i pray where you are there either sitting or standing between you and the lord you say oh lord i want to get rid of this old nature i want you to come and perform a spiritual supernatural operation in me and take away the old old nature and give me the new nature he will do it in jesus name galatians chapter 5 i'm reading there from verse 19 galatians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife sedition heresies envies murders drunkenness revenues and such like of the which i tell you listen to this of the which i tell you before that is i'm telling you before the judgment day comes i'm telling you now before 
before that judgment and the wrath of God will come upon your life of the which I tell you before as I've told you even in time past that they which do such things tell me the rest tell me out loud they shall not inherit the kingdom of God what a great condemnation for the people who are adulterers for the people who are fornicators for the people who are unclean that is they have all this pornography pornography pictures they're looking at and it says this condemnation will come upon them for the people as chivious and all those who are into idolatry either you have idolatry you worship yourself above god your own opinion is greater than the word of god your own idea is greater than the word of god your own desires and what you want to do is greater than whatever else reading the word of god you worship self you're an idol worshiper or maybe it's money you're worshiping whenever you see money money is the thing and whatever you have to do even if you have to get rid of other people to be able to have that money you want it at all costs you're an idol worshiper you're worshiping money or it may be that you know it's property you you know you get this and then you are not you get this again and get this again and get that again you're just running out of property and whether it affects your christian life or not affects your commitment or not affects your consecration or not affects your service to the lord or not all that does not matter to you because your idol all is so much in your heart or maybe you worship a man it may be the man may be a husband and your husband says i know this is the word of god but she as long as i am your husband you cannot go to that church and you cannot do this or that and because you exalt that man as your idol as your god above the lord jesus christ above god almighty and then you honor the man more than god you respect the man more than god you love the man more than god and you submit to the man more than you submit to god that's your idol and it says all those idol worshipers will never get into the kingdom of god or maybe you're a woman worshiper maybe your wife that you worship that this is what the word of god says but then your wife you know begins to cry with all those tears and said my husband if you do that it means you don't love me if you do that you say but my dear this is the word of god and your dear says well you see i'm crying now i'm sorrowful now because you carry this religion too far and you're following bible following god if you love her more than god that's your idol and it says no idolater shall inherit the kingdom of god is the old nature of man that you exalt whatever it is whether it is money or men or women or a child some people want children at the cost of getting to hell they say i just want children whether i get the child from a tree or i get the child from the river or get the child from the forest or get the child from an herbalist or get the child from an occultic man that doesn't i just want a child the child becomes an idol and that's what the lord is saying that all idol worshippers they are their path in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone it is the condemnation of the people that have the old nature and i pray that god will deliver you and deliver me and deliver all of us from this in jesus name i thought you'll give me a good good amen, amen. look at verse 20 it says witchcraft witchcraft well by the way the people that she to witchcraft all they have is all this evil power i want to ask you a question maybe if you have a witchcraft what can you do if you have witchcraft well maybe you can destroy life if you destroy somebody's life if they say a so-called christian maybe he goes to heaven and then you go to hell for 20 years for a hundred years for a thousand years for a million years for a trillion years forever and ever just because you're trying to use the power of witchcraft what can you do you destroy the business of a man you destroy the physical progress of a man or you make a man just a little bit unhappy by your witchcraft that's all you can do but that witchcraft will earn you everlasting punishment in the lake of fire forever and ever and it's the people that have the old nature you can't tell me that somebody has the nature of christ and has witchcraft at the same time he has godliness he has witchcraft at the same time he has 
has sanctification he has holiness in his heart and he's a man that is heavenly minded and he's, he's having witchcraft at the same time the people that have witchcraft they are the people with the old nature they're not born again yet may I call themselves I'm a worker but you know what you do in the dark you know what you do in the secret and all those things will earn you eternal punishment everlasting punishment in the lake of fire it talks about hatred and variance and emulation it talks about wrath and strife and sedition and heresies and envies and murders those who kill those unborn babies those who commit the abortion and then talks about drunkenness and rebelling so this night a club kind of thing and it says such like that is the least goes on and it says those to do such will not inherit the kingdom of God. I pray that today, if you're in that condition between you and the Lord, you kneel down before the Lord, bend down before the Lord, bow before the Lord, and say, oh Lord, I surrender. I want to have you as my all in all, as my Savior, as my Lord, as my King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I submit everything I have unto you. Give me your nature while I get rid of this old nature. I pray God will do it in your life. We're looking at first corinthians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 9 first corinthians chapter 6 and i'm reading there from verse 9 first corinthians chapter 6 we're looking at verse 9 it says know ye not that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators there we are again are, are you not surprised that every time paul the apostle is writing to the gentiles he's writing about fornication and adultery and every time the apostles are writing to the gentiles from the acts of the apostles chapter 15 they talk about adultery and fornication in romans adultery and fornication first corinthians adultery and fornication you come to second corinthians adultery and fornication you come to ephesians it talks about adultery and fornication you come to colossians it talks about adultery and fornication i know you come to revelation talks about adultery and fornication all through the new testament and the lord jesus spoke about it and the apostles spoke about it just to warn everybody that those that commit such things you will not inherit the kingdom of God and I pray that as you see the warning going from Matthew all through to Revelation that we will take warning and that thing will never touch our lives again in Jesus name I said we'll never touch our lives again in Jesus name it says in that chapter 6 and verse 9 know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. And such was some of you, but now ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by and by the Spirit of our God. I pray that that new life and that new nature will be yours in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number two now. In point number two, the new nature after conversion the new nature after conversion uh, there, there's something that is called conversion and in fact the lord jesus christ spoke about a conversion 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 it means a change it means a transformation that there is a conversion look at matthew chapter 18 and use and see jesus christ using that word conversion 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 we're looking at matthew chapter 18 Matthew chapter 18 I'm reading there from verse 3 yeah, and, and said Verily I say unto you Except ye be converted You see that? Except ye be converted Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ He said the nature you brought into this world Will never get to heaven the life you have lived before coming to Christ will never allow you to get to heaven. And following society and following the multi to do evil will never allow you to get to heaven. And it says, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall in no wise, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of God of heaven. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, conversion. 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 Transformation Transformation A change A turning around It's not just a superficial Outward external turning around It's an inward thing That comes to you And there's that inner change Inward change Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 19 Repent ye therefore And be converted You see that? Repent ye therefore And be be converted it means that there's going to be a change it's an inner change it's something that happens on the inside and it is called conversion and it says that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord i'm sure you see then that the bible calls it conversion it says that the change that comes to you and that change is called conversion acts of the apostles chapter 15 i'm looking at verse 3 Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 verse 3 And being brought on their way by the church They passed through Phinesi, Phinesi and Samaria Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles They didn't just take on religion They didn't just say, you know, I start going to church I just change my, you know, dressing and appearance It's an inward thing It's a change of nature that then comes out with a change of life and they called it conversion they declare the conversion of the gentiles and they cause great joy unto all the people i'm looking at psalm 51 psalm 51 the necessity of conversion the importance of conversion the reward of conversion and the evidence of conversion in your life in my life and our lives together in psalm 51 i'm reading from verse 5 behold i was shipping iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom he says purge me with Esau and I shall be clean it is talking about conversion purge me and cleanse me and wash me and take this old nature away from me it's by prayer and then you take the provision of the lord jesus christ on the cross of calvary he says purge me with Esau and I shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow make me to know joy to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities not just some not just many all my iniquities blot them out take them away even the remembrance of them of course the practice of them take them away creating me verse 10 a clean heart of god and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted and sinners shall be converted and sinners shall be converted unto thee that means there's conversion then there is a change it's an inward change sinners will be converted and when you meet the Lord Jesus Christ and you are cleansed and you are washed that's what happens that change takes place and then the word of God has a great effect in your heart in your soul and in your life and and that uh, conversion then becomes something that other people can see. I'm looking at some 19. Psalm 19, I'm looking at verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting the soul. And so you will find then, as you read the word of God, there's conversion. And when that conversion has taken place, then there is something new. New about you, new in your life. We're coming to the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The conversion brings a new nature brings a new life and brings a new spirit a new heart and something very new now coming out of you coming out of life it talks about it in the first corinthians chapter 5. first corinthians chapter 5 i read verse 7 Purge out therefore the old leaven that she may be a new lamb as she are on leaven for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. And then it says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, 
neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth it says that when that new nature comes there'll be sincerity and there will be truth and then there'll be newness of life in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 i'm reading there from verse 4 romans chapter 6 verse 4 conversion and then the new nature the new nature comes when that conversion has taken place we're looking at romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore were buried with him by baptism on into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also shall walk how how say it aloud in newness of life that's it you want to ask yourself the question are you new What's the difference between today and two years ago? Between today, between this year and five years ago? Between this time you profess that you know the Lord. This time you profess that you are now a child of God. This time that you profess that a new nature has come and that conversion has taken place. This time that you profess that you are saved, you are born again. And you saw those languages. I'm asking you the question, what is the difference between now and then between today and the past if you are walking in darkness are you not still walking in darkness if you are an adulterer are you not saying an adulterer if you are an adulteress are you not saying an adulteress if you are a fornicator are you not say a fornicator if you are a liar are you not say a liar if you are a deceiver are you not say a deceiver what change what transformation has taking place because it tells us here that now we are buried with Christ and all the sins of the past of the old nature everything should have been buried and now we walk and live and act in newness of life it is that newness of life that change of character that marks out a person who is converted a child of God and who is walking in the narrow path that leads to heaven if that is not there if that change is not there the Lord is beckoning on you and beseeching you and pleading with you today and saying why don't you come today why don't you between you and the Lord where you are and make that place where you are an altar and then seek the face of the Lord and say oh Lord I come I want this nature change I want this character i want this attitude change i want to be on my way to heaven so that by the grace of god in the strength of the lord the newness of life the purity of life and the change and the transformation that ought to take place in the life of a child of god that will come to you and you will know the spirit of god will be a witness in your heart that all things have passed away all things have become new your neighbors will be able to tell your friends will be able to tell even your enemies will be able to tell that things are different now that difference will come today in jesus name i said it will come in jesus name look at verse 5 for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection look at verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be what's that I said what's that destroyed and that henceforth we should not serve sin when that happens look at verse 18 look at verse 18 it says in verse 18 being then made free from sin what became he became the servants of righteousness look at verse 22 in verse 22 but now being made free from sin and become servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life i pray that will happen to every one of us i say that will happen to every one of us what would you be able to say what will you give as evidence toward the retreat in the presence of the lord and that jesus touched your life if the new nature is not there what will be the source of your joy what's the reason for the glory what's the reason for saying that i went for the retreat i was there i was there what's the reason for the joy if there's no new life if there's no new nature if there's no new character if there's no righteousness and the 
beauty of holiness in your life it is that righteousness and it is that new life and new nature that shows that we are being in the presence of God when your friends will see and your neighbors will see and the people around you will see and just looking at you like this they know that this person has been somewhere because a change has taken place in your life in Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel chapter 36 I'm reading from verse 25 Ezekiel chapter 36 and we're looking at that from verse 25 here is what it says in verse 25 it says then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you thank God there's cleansing today I said thank God there's cleansing today and that cleansing will take place in every life in Jesus name in verse 26 a new heart that's a new nature a new heart that's a new spirit a new heart that's something on the inside it takes it with the old it takes away the sinful and then it plans the saintly heart and the holy heart and the new heart and the divine nature in your life it says a new heart also will i give will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away everybody say take away everybody say it aloud take away you know when you take something away it's no more there when you take the stony heart away stubbornness will no more be there self-will will no more be there disobedience will no more be there rebellion will not, no more be there the spirit of absalom will no more be there when you take that you know, the spirit of achan will no more be there when that thing is taken away if you find in your heart in your life there's always a tendency to be like an achan there's always a, to be like Absalom there's always a, it tends to be like Judas a tendency to be like demons that are forsaken the truth and has loved this present world if you find something like that is there you say oh Lord today take it away because it says it will take away from you the stony heart and then it says I will give you the heart of flesh it will happen I said it will happen and then it says in verse 27 and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them the time has come it will happen I said the time has come it will happen I come to point number three the divine nature in the conqueror the divine nature in the conqueror these are the people that overcome I'll be an overcomer I said I'll be an overcomer now let me let me explain once more to you. you see there are many people who use that word overcome in fact you are going to find that you know in many places where people like this gather together and they read the bible mention the name of jesus every time we say overcome overcome they think about i'm going to overcome sickness i'm going to overcome all my enemies i'm going to overcome satan and then they rise up and they pray meanwhile they don't overcome the adultery in their lives and the fornication in their lives and the stealing in their lives and the fraud in their lives and the lying in their lives and the deception in their lives and the hypocrisy in their lives all that they don't overcome the only thing they want to overcome is sickness and affliction and the bible says if in this life only we have hope in christ if in this life only we have healing we have prosperity we have materials if in this life only we have hope in christ will be of all men the most miserable the real overcomers we're talking about the real conquerors we're talking about are the people that conquer sin they conquer self all those peculiarities of the old nature they conquer them and then they say thank god i'm on my way to heaven and you forget about the sickness to start with about all those infirmities to start with a sick person can get to heaven but a sinful man will never get to heaven that's the reason why the greatest thing you want to conquer in your life is the sin nature is a sinful practice is a sinful things that you have been doing so when i talk about the divine nature and in the conqueror i'm talking about the people that conquer sin the people that conquer self and the people that conquer all those self-centered attitudes in their lives i'm looking at second peter chapter one in second peter chapter one i'm reading from verses three and four second peter chapter one we're looking at verses three and four it says according as his divine power 
he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness we don't have any excuse i cannot be godly we don't have that excuse i cannot be holy we don't have that excuse you know it's a place i'm living in my village where i'm living things are so tough he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness you know it's the market where i'm selling those people if you sell among those people there's no way you can ever be holy don't say that again he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness other people say you know if it were not the kind of children i have i know i'll be holy i'll be righteous i'll be pure i'll be heavenly minded but my children will not allow me to be holy Holy, don't say that again anywhere you are whether you're in babylon or you're in egypt or you're in capernaum or you're in nazareth or you're in bethlehem or you're in jerusalem even where they crucified the lord jesus christ in that very place anywhere you are you can live a holy life a righteous life because he gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness and this morning he will give it to us in jesus name he said according as his divine power it's not according to you know my human weakness and my peculiarities that is the way i am and that is the way I'll ever be never he says it's according to his divine power that he has given us all things pertaining unto life and pertaining to godliness and through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory he has not called us to the grace we're not going to be in disgrace in jesus name he has called us to glory i said he has called us to glory you know when you live a life that is glorious and beautiful a life that is just shining and resplendent for the lord that he has called us to glory and virtue to something virtuous not vice not defiling not evil a life that is clean a life that is pure a life that is washed in the blood of the lamb and it is holy and pure through and through within and without every moment of the day and every day of the week and every week of the month of every month of the year that the power of the grace of god in our lives no matter the temptation no matter the trial no matter your surrounding it calls us to glory and it calls us to virtue and it says whereby are giving unto us in verse 4 exceeding great and precious precious promises that by these great and precious promises you might be partakers of that divine nature i will be a partaker i said i'll be a partaker and you know when the nature that's in christ the nature that jesus christ had when he lived in the midst of those pharisees and sadducees and he remained pleasing unto the father and he remained holy and righteous and he said which of you convinceth me of sin when that same nature of jesus christ when it comes into you according to that divine nature he says that here we're having escaped the corruption that's in the world through laws you'll escape all that loss in jesus name all the propensities and all the peculiarities and all the practices of the life of the past by the grace of god today we're going to overcome i said we're going to overcome so that after this retreat when he comes into your life and makes you a christian makes you a conqueror makes you more than a conqueror and then you go to those same places you were living before that same market you were before that same school you were before that same company you were before that same office where you were before that same family where you were before and now you live a righteous life a holy life a pure life a kind of life that's above reproach that jesus christ himself in his nature jesus christ is there in his power was well, the cleansing of the blood of the lamb he purges you and washes you and then that divine nature is there and the things you used to do even when temptation comes you cannot do it anymore say praise the lord something happened to me that something will happen to you today and then it says in verse 5 of that a passage that is in second peter chapter 1 in verse 5 there it says and beside this giving all diligence you know the christian life is not for the lazy fellow it's not for the you know the people the careless fellow, the carefree fellow it's the people that are determined it's the people that are diligent it says giving all diligence that will add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance and patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacketh these things he that lacketh the virtue 
he that lacketh revelation knowledge he that lacketh temperance self-control he that lacketh patience and perseverance he that lacketh purity and godliness he that lacketh righteousness and godliness he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgot him that he was purged from his own sins wherefore the rather brethren give diligence you see that's the second time he's mentioning that word that means you're serious about this you're passionate about this you're desirous about this and you're determined about this that this old nature will not follow me after this day this old nature will not remain this day a new life a new nature a new direction and a new kind of lifestyle and characteristic it says you are diligent about it to make your calling and your election sure for if you do these things it shall never fall i pray you will not fall i said you will not fall for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ the lord will do it i said the lord will do it first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 i'm reading there from verse 1 first john chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love has the father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not you know there are some people they want to be popular with the world if you want to be popular with the world you never be able to live the christian life because the world will never appreciate the Christian life, will never love the Christian life, will not honor the Christian life, will not encourage the Christ-like life. And so if you are looking for being popular in the world, forget about heaven. Because it says, the world knew him not, because it also knows us not, beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Look at verse 3. And every man, how many people? Every man, how many people? And every man, and every man that has this hope in him, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him, tell me, sinneth not. The one who continues adultery and fornication is not a Christian. The one who continues stealing and lying is not a Christian. And the one who continues in all this fighting and hatred and enmity is not a Christian. It says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous he that committeth sin tell me is of the devil and then it says for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil aha uh -huh. there are some more children of the devil there are some more children of god and it says who Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Look at chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 18. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, it says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. We know, we know that. We know that because that's the promise of God. We know that because that's the experience of every child of God. We know that because that's what the grace of God can do. We know that because that's what the power of the Lord Jesus jesus christ can do christ jesus has the power he has the power to destroy even the very root of sin and the practice of sin from our lives christ jesus has the power and it is the power of god that he wills and when that jesus christ comes into your life and then he becomes your savior he becomes your redeemer he becomes the one that 
makes the transformation in your life this is what we know we know this after we are praying we know this after we experience it and we know this after he gives us that grace to live in this newness of life we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of him of god keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not he will not touch you again I said it will not touch you again when you are born again and he gives you this nature and then you become a soldier in the Lord Jesus Christ and then with that spirit of a conquering soldier you march on in life temptations come you overcome trials come you overcome all those uh, things that uh, used to befall you in the past they come against your life say no it cannot be again you overcome you'll be an overcomer in Jesus name and it is the people that have that kind of conquering spirit they are the people that overcome and the people that are going to get to heaven at last i will be there i said i will be there i said i will be there will be there in jesus name revelation chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 7 revelation chapter 2 verse 7 he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him that overcometh not to the people that are falling into sin every time the people that are you know committing evil every time stealing every time you know fraud here and fraud there it says to him that overcometh i will give to each of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god look at verse 11 he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt and the second death is for the overcomer look at verse 17 there in verse 17 it says he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him that overcometh will i give to each of the healing manner and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name a new name with a new nature reaching which no man knoweth saving he except he that receiveth it i want you to look at verse 26 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end it says to him i will give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter shall they be broken to shivers even as i received of my father and i will give him the morning star look at chapter 3 verse 5 in chapter 3 verse 5 he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and i will not blot out his name out of the book of life but i will confess him his name before my father and before his angels look at verse 12 chapter 3 verse 12 him that overcome it it says i will make a pillar in the temple of my god and i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name look at verse 21 to him that overcometh i will will i grant to sit with me in my throne and then he says even as i also overcame and i'm set down with my father in his throne the promises for the overcomer the people that have that conquering spirit they conquer the flesh they conquer the world they conquer the tempter they conquer the temptress they conquer in every way those are the people that are going to get to heaven i will be there in jesus name i said i will be there in jesus name look at chapter 21 of revelation revelation 21 verse 7 revelation 21 verse 7 he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son i will be his god and he shall be my son i pray that will happen to you i said that will happen to you as we go from this place we're not going like you know with the spirit of a coward and the captive and the one that is coward by you know by the devil by the world by the neighbors by the men by the women and then all those tempters and princesses when they come to us then we don't have any backbone any spine we don't have any courage any conviction we're going into the world when we leave this retreat as conquering soldiers I said we're going to conquer his soldiers and when those tempters come and when those people come and they do what they used to do want you to get us back it was oh no you are late but not because now we went to the powerhouse of the lord and we got power i said we got power 
what are you going to get this morning i said what do you get today i so rise up now you talk to the lord in prayer you say oh lord all those things that used to conquer me all those things that put you used to put my face on the on the ground all those things that used to make me bend and bow and then i see if i've not, not met christ all those things today you will conquer them for me all the temptation all the trial all the things that make me afraid all the things that intimidate me oh lord i'm coming now i want you to forgive me all the past and take away this old nature from me and give me a new nature i want to leave this place in the power of the strength of the lord so that lord i'll be able to stand as a conqueror open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer and understand the lord is calling you to a new life calling you to a new life and in that new life he wants you to be a son be a son as many as received into them you get power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name you are talking to the lord now in prayer this time to pray is the time to pray is the time to pray you are talking to the lord in prayer saying oh lord i want to be a conqueror i want to be a conqueror all these works of the flesh and all these things of the devil touching me and making me to fall and i'm not living a straightforward life i'm not living a life above reproach a glorious life a gracious life oh lord take it away from me the lord will do it the lord will do it that's his promise his promise to give us a new nature a new nature a new nature is a conquering nature it's not a nature that is yielding to sin every time smoking is gone all the drunken drunkenness, the drunkenness is gone everything everything that's of the devil all that is gone and then you are telling the lord oh lord here am i today here am i today look upon me oh lord and take away this old nature and give me the nature of christ the nature of christ that will come with the concrete spirit that you'll be able to live a life a life above sin a life above evil then you consecrate everything before the lord consecrate everything before the lord if it's a woman that's always making you to fall consecrate that before the lord if it's a man always making you to fall consecrate that before the lord if it is money that is making you to fall consecrate before the lord if it is job or property or whatever it is making you to fall consecrate that before the lord and say oh lord here am i oh lord here am i i lay everything upon the altar i want to get to heaven I want to get to heaven i want to get to heaven and all the things of this life all the things of this life that are trying to deceive you all the things of this life that are trying to just you know make you a backtrack again and then you are falling you are rising you are not living the christian life the righteous life you are saying oh lord holiness unto the lord holiness unto the lord my life my will my mind everything that's in me i give unto you back again oh lord sanctify me if you are saved already sanctify me if you are saved already sanctify me and if you are not born again yet if you know that spirit of god is sin all those outward sins are there all those immorities are there all the drunkenness is there all the stealing is there all the fighting is there all the violence is there so lord save me and i shall be saved save me and i shall be saved save me and i shall be saved take all this is away from my life oh lord and let a new change a new change come upon your life today he will do it he will do it if you have all your heart you pray with all your soul all your mind and you tell the lord standing upon the promises of god oh lord here am i make a change in my life oh lord make a change in my life oh lord if any man be in christ it's a new creature it's a new creature all things have passed away and all things have become new let that newness of life newness of spirit newness of character newness of behavior let it be seen in you that you are living your life not because of this man that woman not because of that boy or that girl not because of church not because of deeper life but because you are a christian because you are born again because you are a son and because you are salt and because you are a saint of god and that saintliness and holiness has come in your, in your life and then because we know whosoever is born of god does not commit sin because the nature of god the seed of god remains in him abides in him and he cannot sin because he's born of god you want to tell the lord that new nature that comes into somebody who is born again that new life that comes with somebody who is born again and becomes a new creature in christ a new creature in christ a new creature in christ all things passed away all things pass away all things become new oh lord do it in me let him let him do it let him do it that you will say oh lord today i must feel that new life 
I must have that new life. I must know that new life. I must experience that new life. And then the grace of God will go with you through life. There will be godliness. There will be righteousness. There will be holiness. There will be purity. And then you will be conquering. Temptation will come. You will conquer. All those tempters and temptresses will come. You will conquer. All the old things will try to come back into your life. You will conquer. Because, because, because you have met the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has made a mighty change in your life. Let him make that mighty change in your life. Christ Jesus has the power. He has the power. He has the power to change us. He has the power to transform us. He has the power to purify us. He has the power to wash us clean, to make us whiter than snow. He has the power to make us live a victorious life, a conquering life over all the things of the past that were able to say, Oh Lord, there must be a difference in my life, a difference in my character, a difference in my behavior, a difference in my thought, a difference in my interaction, a difference in the victory I have, a difference in everything that comes to me, and my action, my attitude, my, uh, uh, my relationships with people. There must be a difference. Don't make any man your idol, your God. Don't make any woman your idol, your God. Don't make money your idol, your God. Be an overcomer be an overcomer the temptation will come temptation will come to hold this and grab this and keep this and be fraudulent you say no never 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 money will not be my god property will not be my god all these things of the world will not be my god i want to serve the lord with all my heart all my soul and all my mind and all those things that he used to make me you know love love them more than i love god i i reject them i i, I give them away i give them up and i want to follow them lord all the days of my life you tell the lord tell the lord examine your life and see in your life what you see that is making you to live a substandard life an unrighteous life an unholy life a kind of life that god is saying this is not what jesus died on the cross to give you something higher something greater something more glorious he wants to do in your life oh say oh lord here am i today do this in my life something greater something higher something better than what i've got before i want you to do it for me lord do it for me lord do it for me lord and cleanse me within and without cleanse me within and without cleanse me within and without and purge me and make me whiter than snow make me whiter than snow make me whiter than snow the spirit of the conqueror the spirit of the overcomer oh lord that's what i'm asking for today that's what i'm asking for today do it for me lord do it for me lord and grant me the spirit of the conqueror i'll conquer sin every form of sin i'll conquer self self-centeredness self-will i will conquer i'll conquer satan in whatever direction it may come oh lord i know you can do it i know you have the power 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 do it for me lord and let the lord do it 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 in your life so that your life today will not be a life that is serving self a life that is serving people a life that is serving society a life that is serving sin a life that is serving satan a life that is totally committed unto the lord that in every action and every behavior every everything that you do you say god will take the preeminence god and god only christ and christ only christ and christ only he will be the lord of your life he will be the king of your life it's your savior it's your redeemer and you're saying oh lord here am i do it in my life all these appearances of the old nature all these appearances of the old behavior all these appearances of the old character all these appearances of what we used to be when we in the world that is coming back again stealing back again into your life you say oh lord today you must cleanse me today you must wash me today you must purify me and take everything away he will do it he will do it if you trust him he'll do it if you ask him ask him in faith asking with determination asking with diligence ask him saying oh lord i will not let you go except to sanctify me i will not let you go except to cleanse me i will not let you go except to purge me i will not let you go except to take this old nature away and then you give me a new nature i will not let you go except to take this carnality away and give me spirituality i will not let you go except i see the remarkable change in my heart remarkable change in my life remarkable change 
within and without around so that lord i'll be able to have the victory and live in the victory the kind of victory i did not have before lord i want to have that victory now victory over adultery over fornication victory over the flesh and victory over all the fraud and victory over all the fear of man victory over everything the devil has been using to get you back into the old life you say lord i'm having the victory today lord i'm having the victory today lord i'm having the victory today tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord i want the victory i must have the victory i want the victory i must have the victory i want the victory i must have the victory be a soldier be a soldier not a cc person not an effeminate person not a delicate person with no backbone with no spine with no conviction with no courage be a soldier a courageous soldier a soldier with conviction that knows that i'm on my way to heaven i'm walking the new in the narrow path that leads to heaven i'm not going to allow anything of the self-life anything of the fleshly life anything of the easy life anything of the indolent life anything that is of the indulgent life i'm not going to allow that in me because i'm a soldier for christ and i must endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord you want to be a good soldier of jesus christ and therefore you're able to endure the hardness whatever it may be i'm uh, saying lord see me through lord see me through lord see me through lord see me through help me that i will be a conquering soldier with this new nature